it's in the common knowledge of people to consider the newest interpretation of a character in a movie as the best. It has better technology, equipment, effects, etc. So the interpretation, so as the production, must have improved over the, over the years. And so a lot of people tend to consider Heath Ledger's performance of the Joker in The Dark Knight, directed by Christopher Nolan, as the best of all times, being the most recent. But let's say we want to really break down the Joker character to its essence, in which case we will find that the Joker is mainly a clown, and he does not possess any kind of superpowers. No matches on prints, DNA, dental, clothing is custom, no labels, nothing in his pockets but knives and lint. No name, no other alias. Greater an inventive capacity to the potential to create commotion all around him. He's able to keep his motivations as non-existent. He just does the stuff because he does. The definition of him being a psychopath, a term we will discuss later on. We are stating the New Yorker is actually a reaction towards his predecessors than an actual original representation of the character. Based on what is presented in the comic, in the TV series, even in the video game, and later, we can state that the Joker in The Dark Knight has actually had the time to digest and recreate each and every one of his predecessors to be able to evolve in the 2008 produced version. He has learned and imitated each previous Joker. Even his lotter is somehow similar to that of Cesar Romero interpretation. <laughs> but was he able to keep his psychotic essence? Or did it turn him into something new? Jack Nicholson's interpretation in Batman of a Psychopath keep us just the main elements that make us believe that his character. He does not look like the restrained society by means of his actions, fails in his professional life, which makes him reach out of criminality as he sustained. Give us a sustained and authentically believed personality due to the fact we know the context of his past. How he reached to criminality will lose every sustain towards the motivation of his actions, one that does stuff just because he feels like doing them. Coming back to the 2008 film version, this Joker is presented without background or history as to what made him become in the state in which he is. Even the character himself is constantly recreating possible scenarios or situations that could have been lead him to how he behaves. The gambling wife or the alcoholic father if one of them is actually true, there is no way to find out. Thus, there is no way to sustain his character background rather than that of being a pathological liar. It is the particular style in which each Joker presents himself in action that defines their pathologies. It is the thing that forced Ledger's interpretation to be considered that of a sociopath, which main intention is to generate chaos in order to make society aware of how wrong they are in giving society an order. Nicholson, on the other hand, has a more psychotic profile. He's a murderer that kills without any kind of remorse or a specific purpose. You could argue that Ledger also seems to have no remorse in his actions, that he just looks to do stuff because he can, or as he so eloquently stated. Nevertheless, to us it seems pretty clear that his main purpose or aim is actually to prove to Batman they are equal. Their respective acting and how does it filter to the audience, so let's watch the following scenes from each movie. Well, Tony, nobody wants a war. <laughs> if we can't do business, why, we'll just shake hands and that'll be it. Yeah? Yeah. Woo. Woo. <laughs> oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> They both have the same content on how the Joker is introduced to people that are going to be associated to them to fulfill their goals. Psychological interpretation, we found that in the first one, we see how a psychopath has his absence or lack of rational talk. He creates a new personality and lack remorse. The character creates this new personality due to the accident and the scars it gave him. He seemed them as a new beginning in his life. He even states, when the shotguns begin, he does not show any remorse in the consequence his actions can develop. He even seems to enjoy shooting Carl Grinson. You can call me Joker. And as you can see, I'm a lot happier. <laughs> Boys 
have no doubt, no second thought in it. It is turned down which shows security and absence of nervousness. Let's watch the second scene. In this scene, we can see Joker presenting the psychopathological state of megalomany, which implies that the person has majesty or magnanimity deliria, that he's superior to all the mafia group because he even shows solution to their number one problem. It's simple. We uh, kill the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> if it's so simple, why haven't you done it already? If you're good at something, never do it for free. Moving into our next sense, we can relate the character's personality to the way they treat other characters. In this case, the way they act while sending their message to society in a commercial or live transmission. A brand. I get a gram again and again. Oh, 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 oh. That luscious tan, those ruby lips and hair color, so natural, only your undertaker knows for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's a symbol that we don't yeah. have to be afraid of scum like you. Yeah. You do, Brian. You really do. Huh? Yeah. Oh, shh, 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 shh. So you think Batman's made Gotham a better place? <laughs> Look at me. Look at me! See, this is how crazy Batman's made Gotham. You want order in Gotham. Batman must take off his mask and turn himself in. Oh, and every day he doesn't, people will die. Starting tonight. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> Joker of 1989 offers a great celebration to the city. We are able to see how does a psychopath won't get nervous or doubt of what he is about to do. He even mocks them in dying with a love. He changes drastically his surroundings from a moment of happiness and fun towards a moment of despair in which shots of excitement change to shots of terror and death. Gas. He's going to kill everybody! Get in the car! No! Get no. in the car! retrospective, Ledger uses violence to achieve his means. For instance, he loses the importance in social norms as law and civil rights, breaks into private property, etc. But he will show interest in justifying his means. There is an egocentric behavior towards mentioning his opinions and interests. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? You know what I am? I'm a dog chasing cars. I wouldn't know what to do with one if I caught it. You know, I just do things. The mob has plans. The cops have plans. Gordon's got plans. You know, they're schemers. Schemers trying to control their little worlds. I'm not a schemer. I try to show the schemers how pathetic their attempts to control things really are. Ledger's Joker had none of the humor Joker is supposed to have. Joker has a twisted sense of humor in a black comedy way. Ledger's Joker looked more like a homeless person with makeup pretending to be the Joker and not the actual Joker character. He seemed to think why so serious was the most hilarious thing he ever said. Joker doesn't care about proving points, but Ledger was obsessed with trying to prove everyone was evil like him. He was more like a common thug in down makeup than Joker. In conclusion, we found that Jack Nicholson's interpretation of the Joker is better than the interpretation of Heath Ledger, due to the fact that the Joker essence is that of a psychotic personality. Actions, causes, and motivations need to remain in a lack of contact with reality in the doing because of doing. Whereas Ledger breaks that interpretation by stating he has no motivation for his actions, but actually showing such eagerness to prove order in society is wrong, which breaks with the actual interpretation of a psychotic character and in all, the essence of a character like the Joker. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs>